Hi guys, welcome back to another uh, motion tracking tutorial. Um, in this class we are going to look at how we stabilize motion, okay? Um, so this is our piece of footage, the link for this is in the description below, it's from Pexels and it's a nice little, um, if you've seen this, this shot in other lessons, it's, it's basically a nice little time lapse, okay? So I'm going to turn my resolution down just so I can play this back for you. All we've got is this Eiffel Tower kind of time lapse of it and there is some movement in there so if I hold my mouse next to the top of it you'll see that it's, 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 it moves away from it. Okay, so basically one thing to consider we want to motion track this first and then we're going to apply that motion back to the footage to um, to stop it moving, okay? Now, one thing you will notice is if you look at this pylon in the front, this pylon moves a lot faster than the actual Eiffel Tower. So you will see, we're going to stabilize it around the Eiffel Tower and you will still see this pylon moving because it's in a different Z space, okay? You've got this depth, so different things are moving at different rates. We are going to stabilize it around the Eiffel Tower so that Eiffel Tower stays steady and you will see some movement in the rest purely because they've got different movements to them. They move a lot faster than the Eiffel Tower does. So in order to start, um, what we're going to do is we're going to click our footage and go to Tracker. If you can't see it, just um, go to Window and then make sure Tracker is ticked. Um, what we want to select, there's two ways we could do it. We could do it with Warp Stabilizer. I've got that in another tutorial. Or we can go to Stabilize Motion. I'm going to go to Stabilize Motion. Okay, so what we've got is a tracking point. And again, if you're not kind of sure how a tracking point works, um, check out my other videos on motion tracking. But all you need to remember, pick an area of high contrast. This inner area you can make bigger and smaller. Um, this is the area you want to lock onto, and this is the area, this outer box, is where the software is going to look for this little bit. So we're locking onto this bit and it's searching within this box, however big or small we make this box. Okay. Um, we're also going to track rotation and scale. So just give them a click, and we've got our second point to do that with. And I am simply going to move this down to. Uh, let's go for this corner by here because I've used this before and I know it works nice and easy um, and yeah so we'll go with that all we need to do now is we need to hit the analyze forward button and it'll go through the footage and it will follow these points throughout the footage and what it's going to do is it's going to record the exact movements in terms of position and any scale and rotation and what we need to do then is apply that the inverse of that to take out the motion. It's almost like deleting the motion. Um, so we'll just let that preview to the end and then we can move on to the next bit, which is a little bit easier. Okay, if we select our layer and hit U, you can see all of these keyframes that the software has generated. If yours has only done like half of them, let's say it's only done from here onwards, that's because you set up your points at this at this specific time and analyze forward. You'll just need to come back and then hit the analyze backwards to generate the other half, but I'm fine. I've got them all. Okay, great. Next thing we need to do is we need to come over to our tracker, okay? Um, and we need to go, right, our track type is set to stabilize, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we need to go to edit target. And the tar our target is our actual footage, which we are trying to um, stabilize. In other tutorials, when we're doing match moving, I always make a null. But in this point, the footage is fine, so just click OK. So that was edit target. Make sure the footage is selected. Click OK. Apply to the X and Y. Click OK. And now we're back in the composition window with all of these kind of um, uh, things, uh, uh, sorry, keyframes generated. So if I click and scrub through, um, let's kind of play through that. I'll turn it off full and down to third just so it previews faster and you can see what's going on. Now, like I said, there's still some motion in these bits, but if I hold my mouse up to the Eiffel Tower, you'll see that there is no wobbliness in that at all. Let's zoom in. This is now very, very, very steady. It stays where my mouse is, okay? So that's really good. We've actually stabled the Eiffel Tower. And again, you can see that other bits are moving because obviously there's different depths in there, but the Eiffel Tower is still the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, just for illustration purposes, so I'm going to drag my another piece of the blank footage in. And you can see, when I turn this new piece on and off, you can see that it's 
there, there is a difference in the position of it, okay? So if I scrub through, you know, you'll see that there's motion within this Eiffel Tower. But on the one which we've stabilized, it's now gone. Now we're left with a problem. If I zoom out just a little bit, what the software is doing is it's keeping the bit that we tracked, is keeping that dead still. But to compensate, it has to move the border of the footage around so you can see these black edges creep in. So what we need to do is we need to pre-compose this. So if we select it, go to Layer, Pre-Compose. In this little box, I'm going to call it Stabilized Version. And I think I may have spelled Stabilized wrong. Stabilized. And the other thing you want to do is make sure Move All Attributes into the new composition is ticked. If you leave it on Leave All Attributes, it'll leave the keyframes outside the composition. But if you don't know how pre-compositions work, don't worry for now. Just make sure this one is ticked by here and then click OK. What that's done is if we double click now, this has changed from blue to, pur to purple to brown. And that's because it's basically a folder. If we double click it, here's our original footage. We've just put this in a new composition. OK, so what we can do now is we can get our scale properties by hitting S on the layer. And we can basically scale this up just a tad. So now, hopefully if I play this through, now you shouldn't, as long as you scale it up enough, you shouldn't have any of these black edges creeping in. And actually, we did right at the end by there. So I'm just going to maybe move it across a couple pixels like that, see if that's enough. So just moved it across and hopefully with a bit of luck, yep, there is no black edges creeping in. So what we've got now is our stabilized version, stabilized around this Eiffel Tower. And again, just for comparison, let's bring the other version back in. And hopefully when I disable and re-enable this, you can see that there is a difference between the two pieces of footage. And actually, I think right at the end, yeah, a little black border creeps in by there. So all I'm going to do is scale this up to 108, maybe 109. There you go, we're safe now. Awesome. So, um, you know, that was, a, that was a little, that was quite a basic example because there wasn't a lot of movement. But for your first stabilization, hopefully you kind of picked up what you need to do. You motion track it like normal as if you were doing a match move. And then edit target, you apply it to the footage, uh, click apply, put it in and pre-compose it into a new composition. And then you can adjust the scale just to kind of cut out those corners, okay? Um, so I hope you learned something in that, hope it helped. Um, give a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, check out our other motion tracking tutorials in the series, and hopefully see you again soon. Cheers, bye.